It's, it's somewhat difficult to see, but near the top of this low bluff along the top of Jos, we have very dark soil. This is just a very good example of what covers tens of thousands of hectares in the local region. This black soil, or terra preta as the Brazilians call it, is dotted all over the Amazon jungle. But what intrigued archaeologists is what it contains. You'll see all kinds of things scattered over the ground here. Many of them look like rocks or stones, but in fact they're all artifacts. Mostly pottery sherds, busted up jars made by the Indians a thousand, two thousand years ago. It's a, it's, a, it's a very dense concentration, rather remarkable in all senses. After just a minute or two, I was able to pick up uh, several handfuls of really uh, dramatic pottery sherds. And when they dug down into the terra preta, scientists made the most revealing discovery of all. Not only was the black soil full of pottery, but it was almost exactly the same composition as the yellow jungle soil around it, except it had been mixed with organic waste. That meant the terra preta had to be man-made. We know that, that this terra preta here formed with this soil. So they look very different, and they are very different in a way, but that's the matrix for that. But we have to have human action interfering in the yellow soil in order to create the terra preta. The soil is easy to work and very fertile. We plant papaya, we plant banana, corn, beans and manioc in Terra Preta. Whatever you plant in Terra Preta does exceptionally well. Terra Preta is so fertile that it's been prized by Brazilian farmers for centuries. Somehow, the prehistoric Amazonians had transformed the world's worst soil into some of the best. Detailed analysis of the Terra Preta has shown it to be full of burnt plant material, but in a special form. Charcoal. Charcoal is in the area here made largely with earthen kilns where organic material like these logs are piled up and uh, uh, earthen mounds are built around them and under partial exclusion of oxygen you get this uh, charcoal. Charcoal is made when you only partially burn the trees and plants. This makes it different to slash and burn, where the plant life and all the nutrients it contains are completely reduced to ash. This can be swiftly washed away by the rain. But charcoal can last in the soil for hundreds of years. So one of the hypotheses is that uh, the Amerindian populations actually use some sort of slash and char technique as a soil fertility enhancer. Inspired by the ancient Amazonians, Johannes Lehmann's student, Christoph Steiner, decided to find out exactly what effect ancient slash and char methods could have. So he has planted a series of experimental plots, some with added charcoal, some without. The experiment is still not finished, but already the results have been amazing. On this plot, we see what happens if we follow the traditional slash and burn technique. After the first harvest already, there's nothing growing anymore, and we have here now the third harvest. Here on this plot, we applied mineral fertilizer, 
but that is not very satisfying. If you look on this, there's almost no yield, almost no grain. A family couldn't live on this. That is not satisfying yield. In comparison to a plot where we applied additional charcoal, There we can see that the yield is much bigger. So there is corn. And this is a plot where we applied charcoal and mineral fertilizer. And this combination, last harvest we had an increase in crop production of 880% in comparison to mineral fertilizer without charcoal. An 880% increase in yield is almost miraculous. Charcoal seems to hold the nutrients in the soil, preventing them from being washed away by the rains. It's a simple trick, but one that Steiner believes could be the key to breaking the destructive cycle of slash and burn, and so reduce the pressure on the rainforest. Increased soil fertility means bigger crop production and people can use the same piece of land for more time for more crop production and don't, are not forced to clear a new piece of primary intact tropical rainforest. And scientists now believe that Terra Preta holds yet one more secret. It seems to have another unique property. Something that may once have helped it to spread across the Amazon and could now help it spread across the world. The discovery has been made by Bill Woods. A few years ago, he came across a place where Terra Preta was being mined and then sold on to local gardeners. What we have here is a material that is so valuable that, that people are coming in trucks and buying it. Um, absolutely unexpected. With decent soil so scarce in the Amazon, selling the Terra Preta seems an odd thing for a farmer to do. But here they've been doing it for 20 years, because it appears that the black earth just keeps growing back. After digging, the soil that's left will grow deeper. It's because it's being fed by the leaves that fall on it. You can see it happening over there and in there now. The situation is he mines it, he leaves 20 centimeters, he allows it to rest. Then after a 20-year period, the um, depth of this dark soil is the same as it was before the mining operation. This is extremely important in that it strongly suggests that the material is alive and that the biology of this material is the important thing that we're looking at. If Woods is right, then Terra Preta can, in some mysterious way, reproduce itself, just like a living thing.